Hi kids, it's Miss Stacy from the Worcester Public Library here with another five ingredient cooking class. Thanks so much for joining me. So we're doing this live on Facebook, we're trying it, but if for some reason you missed an ingredient or step in the recipe, we're also gonna be filming it. So you can check it on our website later. So today we are going to be making bean and cheese quesadillas. So bean and cheese quesadillas are a great recipe if you're just starting to cook. There's only a few ingredients. You actually only need four ingredients and I have a couple optional ingredients I'll show you. They're pretty healthy and they're also something called vegetarian. That just means that there's no meat in, meat in them. That's really good if you don't eat meat, if you're not trying to eat as much meat. Um, some people, for example, aren't eating meat on Fridays right now because of Lent. So this is a great alternative if you want to try a meatless dish. So before we get started, because it's going to take a little bit of time, I'm going to have us preheat our oven to 450 degrees, and then I'll go over the ingredients and the materials and stuff. Um, ask your grown-up if it's okay to do this or ask your grown-up for help. So just um, go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees. Okay. And if you remember from last time, preheating just means that you're warming up your oven so that when you put your dish in, it will be nice and warm and ready to cook for you. So I found this recipe in a great book that's in the children's room at the Worcester Public Library. It's called My First Cookbook by America's Test Kitchen. They put out a lot of cookbooks and I started putting them out for kids. It's great because it has a lot of great pictures and it tells you really interesting facts about the ingredients that you use. All right. So we have a lot of cookbooks in the children's room at the library. We have a lot of cookbooks in the teen room and the adult section. They go from beginner all the way up to advanced level cooking. So if you're interested in any of those, definitely reach out to us and we'll make sure that you get them. All right, so first we're gonna wash our hands like always. I have my hair pinned back. So take a second to do that. And we'll get started. Like I said, we actually only need four ingredients for this recipe, but I'm gonna mention a couple of optional ingredients that we can use too. So the first thing you'll need for your quesadilla are tortillas. These are eight inch tortillas. This is a flour tortilla. That's what the recipe in this book actually asks for, but I wanna make mine a little more healthy. So I have a whole wheat tortilla here. Really, whichever one um, works for you, whatever you have at home will be just fine. The next thing, of course, is gonna be some cheese. This is Monterey Jack cheese. This is a cheese that is not too sharp. It doesn't have a really strong flavor to it. Um, they say it's a bonio cheese. If you wanted a sharper cheese with a lot more flavor, you can certainly sub it out for cheddar or something. Your third ingredient is extra virgin olive oil. You'll need three teaspoons of this, but don't measure it right now because you're gonna be using three, two plus one teaspoons, which means you're gonna be using two teaspoons in one part of the recipe and the last teaspoon in another part of the recipe. And finally, of course, we have black beans. We're gonna use canned black beans in this recipe just because it's a little bit easier, it's a little bit quicker. Um, if you go to the store, you'll notice you have the option to buy beans in can or packages of dried beans. All right. So for the optional ingredients, we have some hot sauce. Um, I don't know about you, but I love hot sauce. So that's something you can use. what they call a garnish. It's kind of just something you put on the plate at the end when you're cooking and you know some people eat it, sometimes it's just a decoration. This is sour cream. So at the end of the recipe, I'm gonna use this to garnish the plate. So 
So um, whoever you're cooking for can dip their quesadilla in the sour cream. And the last optional ingredient, if you know me at all, is going to be a vegetable. Um, I'm going to use corn. Um, if you know me at all, if I add a vegetable to any of my recipes, all of a sudden it's a meal. So corn is my third optional ingredient. All right, so we have quite a few things we need here. We have a strainer. I'm going to put mine in the sink right now. Just remember, this is recorded, so if you need to go back and see what these materials are, definitely do so. A cutting board. I have just a baking pan right here. This is called a baking brush. If you don't have one of these, that's perfectly fine. You can just use a spoon and I'll show you how to do that when we get to it, okay? Again, the recipe asks for a knife, but I actually prefer a pizza cutter when I cut my quesadilla. That's totally up to you. And like I said, when we get to it, I'll show you how to do that. We need some measuring cups, some measuring spoons, small bowl, fork, and finally a can opener. How many of you kids have even used a can opener before? It's a little bit tricky. It takes a little bit of practice, but I think you can do it. This is something if you need your grown-ups help, by all means ask your grown-up, but really give it a try. So just open the can opener. When you open it, you notice a sharp part on the top and a more rough circle on the bottom. I'm gonna hold it up like that. I have my can of beans right here. You are going to clamp it on the can of beans so that it locks, you'll hear a popping sound. Did you hear that? And then just hold it really tight and use all your might from your other hand while not letting go to open the can. So this takes some practice, like I was saying, and um, the only reason I was saying you might want to get an adult is because when you do open it, the top is going to be very, very sharp. So I'm going to do it here. So I'm left-handed. I feel like these are always made for right-handed people. So if I can do it, I think you can do it too. I'm just going to twist it all the way around. Put it down. And it's gonna just, when you're almost done, it's gonna pop just a little bit. This edge is extremely, extremely sharp. So just be careful. And I'm gonna rinse these. I'm gonna put it in my sink. I don't know if you can see this. I just put them in my strainer and then I'm gonna rinse them with water. So beans are really good for you. Beans have fiber, which keep you full for a long time. They have protein, which makes you strong. Um, canned beans are very convenient, but a lot of times they have in the water that they're stored in, they have a lot of salt. So I like to rinse them really good to get some of that salt off. I'm gonna take a measuring cup and measure one third cup of black beans and put them in your bowl. Okay, just put them right in there like that. Remember when I was um, saying how with your olive oil, you want to do two teaspoons and then another teaspoon later? So right now we're going to measure two teaspoons of our olive oil and put it right into the bowl with the beans. Okay. I have my teaspoon right here. I'm 
So I imagine for you kids, this might be the fun part, but it's also the fun part for me. And that's just taking your fork and mashing these beans. Just mash them really well. I'm gonna put it down for a second. You want to mash them so your beans and your olive oil become a really thick paste. consistency of that. It's really thick. Doesn't look that good, but I promise you these are delicious. So once you have your paste, the beans and the olive oil, I'm actually going to have you put it aside for just a moment and grab your pan. On your pan, you're going to put down your two um, eight, inch, 8 inch tortillas. I'm going to do one of the flour ones and one of the whole wheat ones. And now at this point, you're going to measure. Oops, I just dropped my teaspoon. You are going to measure one more teaspoon of the extra virgin olive oil. We'll just measure this into a little bowl. Now this is the way you want to take, this part's actually pretty fun too. You want to take your brush, your baking brush, and dip it in your oil, kind of like you're painting, but you're going to brush it on your tortillas. You're going to brush it on even, evenly so that it covers the entire tortilla. And you're going to do it for the other side too. So remember I said if you don't, if you happen not to have one of these, that is okay. You can just use a spoon. Just paint, maybe put like a little drizzle of olive oil on one side and a little drizzle on the other. And then just spread it around with the spoon. So this works fine. The brush is just coats it a little more evenly but this is perfectly fine so when you feel like you've spread the olive oil around enough you are actually going to turn them over so that the side with the olive oil is facing the pan and the tops are just plain that is going to keep your tortilla from sticking to the pan and it's also going to give your quesadilla, a nice golden crisp to it. All right, so we're gonna go back to our bean mixture. And we're gonna put half on one of those tortillas and half on the other tortilla. But we're not gonna cover the whole tortilla. Picture it in half. I'm gonna do one side of it. And that way you'll fold it over after. So I'll show you and then you can try it. All right, you see how I kind of just put the beans on one side? There we go. Next, we're gonna add our cheese. And we need two thirds cup of cheese. And same thing, we're just gonna top our beans with the cheese. So let me measure this really quickly. Two thirds, so I'll do half on each one. You can use your hands, that's why it's important to wash them in the beginning, but after that, it's okay to use them, and you'll actually need to use them in a second. 
So I have my cheese on there. I think just by looking at it now, you can kind of start to see what we're making. This is Len. If you are adventurous like me and you want to add just something mild like Frank's hot sauce or something hotter, you can actually put it on before you cook. So I'll do that on one. And this is completely, completely optional. If you don't like hot sauce, just don't try it. Oh, I forgot to say, this recipe is good for um, two quesadillas. It's for two servings. So when you make this, you can make it for yourself and maybe uh, somebody in your family. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then you're going to fold the tortilla right in half. If you can see that. That's why we only filled half of it. So you're going to fold it over. And it's completely stuffed. Your hands will get a little, a little messy here, because if you remember, we have the olive oil on the other side of the, of the tortilla. All right, so these are gonna go in the oven for five to seven minutes. Um, I should have heard your beep to let you know that the oven is ready, that it's done preheating. If not, wait for that beep and then put them in for five to seven minutes. So I'll do that now. And you can set your timer or you can kind of just watch on your clock for the five minutes and peek. When they're done, you'll see a golden brown on the top. And then you can go ahead and take them out. Don't forget your oven mitt. Don't forget to ask for grown-ups help if you need it or grown-ups permission. Okay, so after you have five to seven minutes, you're going to pull out your bean and cheese quesadilla. I prepped one a little while ago. See how it's nice and golden brown on the top? Very crunchy. After you pull it out, let it cool for about five minutes and then transfer it to this uh, cutting board. This is one if you want, you can use your knife to cut it. Or like I said, I prefer to use the pizza cutter. And I just cut it into four ways. All right, four neat wedges. This is the one with the flour tortilla. So there you have your bean and cheese quesadilla that you made yourself. And I plated ones to make us a meal if you're sharing with you and a family member. So this is the whole wheat one. This is the whole wheat bean and cheese quesadilla with my little bit of sour cream and my veggie on the side. I don't know if you can see that. Looks delicious. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing another live cooking demonstration, five ingredients for kids um, next month. It's going to be this one. So we hope you uh, join us then. And don't forget to check our website, mywpl.org, if you wanted to see, um, if you missed any steps in the recording, in the 